Okay, in response to our own personal invitation, let me see if I can do this here, I wanna show you. Response to our own personal invitation, God's spirit of power comes in us. So once we accept Christ, this is what happens. God's spirit of power, see my red dot there? God's spirit comes into us. Notice the three circles here. You've got the, bo the body, which is this outer gray circle here. You've got the soul, which is the inner gray circle. And then you've got the spirit and heart right here that are gold. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, God unites our spirit with his spirit. And he gives us a brand new spirit. Brand new spirit, a brand new heart. Now here, let me try and define, if I can, the difference between spirit and heart, because it's important. Spirit, you can put alongside on your, on your chart here. Spirit is the power source. That's like the electricity. That's God's spirit in us. That's the, that's the electricity. That's the, that's the power source of our lives. Our heart is where God's eternal life dwells. That's his love again. It's over here. It's supernatural love, supernatural wisdom, supernatural power. That's like the light that the electricity empowers. So that's the light. So here you've got the power source here, and you've got the eternal life or the light in your heart. And that's what happens when you um, first accept Christ. This is called the new birth. This is called being born again. This is called justification, what Chuck talked about this morning. This is time when, Ch when Christ comes in us and implants his, his eternal life in our hearts. Love, wisdom, and power. And we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's the indwelling of the Spirit. That's when you first become born again. Okay, now there's another thing called the empowering of the Holy Spirit, the empowering of the Spirit. This is the time that the Spirit is supposed to come upon us for the sake of empowering. This is sometimes called baptism of the Spirit, or the initial infilling of the Spirit. Luke 24, 49, Jesus tells his disciples, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from, our high, from on high. This is the time that God's Spirit, right here, the power source, breaks through breaks through the soul, through this is the soul right over here, he breaks through the soul, he breaks for the, through the physical part, and this is the initial infilling of the Spirit, where the Spirit comes upon us. And this is called the baptism of the Spirit. This is where God's power enables us to become genuine witnesses of Christ, not just with our words, but with our actions. Now, I believe that this indwelling indwelling of the Spirit and the empowering of the Spirit, I believe, should happen at the very same time. But for a lot of us, there were many years because we didn't know enough to ask for the empowering of the Holy Spirit at the time of our, of our new birth. 20 years for me between the time I was born again and the time I was finally in um, where the Spirit came upon me, the empowering of the Spirit. This is called the baptism of the Spirit. And I believe God intends us to have them both happen at the very same time. Okay, so that's the, first of all, you've got the indwelling of the Spirit that happens when you're first born again, where the Spirit comes in your heart and, you're, and um, you're, uh, gives you a new spirit. Then you have the empowering of the Spirit where He first comes upon you with, with power. That's an incredible experience. Then you have this time. This is what we miss. This is called being refilled with the Spirit. And this is a daily, daily experience. A lot of us that have been baptized in the Spirit 20, 30 years ago thought that's all it was and that would just kind of take us through the whole time. No, we have to continually let the Spirit come upon us. Here again, here's the Spirit of God. Here's the life of God in our hearts. We have to continually make faith choices so that that life of God continually flows through our soul, through our body, and that what people see out here is God's life. They see the agape love of God. They see his wisdom. They see his power. That's the fruit. That's called walking by the Spirit, continually refilled. This. I believe, and you check me out on all these things, this does not happen automatically. I wish it did. It's our choice daily to be refilled with the Spirit. 
Ephesians 5, 17 through 18 says, whereby um, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And if you look at that verb there, filled, it means to be continually filled with the Spirit. You know, don't allow the Spirit to be quenched. Continue to make faith choices so that Spirit of God that's in your, in your heart will continue to flow through you. That's our responsibility. Now this step differs from the last two, two steps in that it's now my responsibility to stay refilled with the Spirit. First two, God, in, in dwelling of the Spirit, God comes in me. Up, God comes in me. Empowering of the Spirit, God comes upon me. Being refilled of the Spirit is my choice because I need to make a faith choice so God's Spirit can continually fill me. So my, my choice is to stay open and cleansed. It's my moment by moment choice here. Thank you.